Ozempic is the, Ozempic, uh, is say, yeah. the American name. And these are all an, in a class called GLP-1s. They essentially really reduce the appetite, which goes to show you that, and, and people lose weight, like a lot of weight. Weight loss injections like Ozempic and Monjaro promise shockingly big results with a small needle. But what if the ancient practice of fasting is not only safer, but more effective? If you want to lose weight because it's important, then you can just set aside a period of time that you don't eat. Let your body eat your body fat. That's what fasting is doing for you. And it's totally natural because that's what it's there for. That body fat is not there for looks. It's there for you as a source, as a store of calories. So fasting just lets you use that. World's number one weight loss expert, Dr. Jason Fung, puts modern medicine head to head with our metabolic biology to find out which actually works better and why the answer will probably shock you. Even in the academic centers, they all think about sort of calories, how to get calories down, how to reduce calories. And I always say, well, it's not about the calories, right? It's about fixing the hormones that are behind the calories. This isn't just another health debate. We're comparing the most hyped modern drug with the most ancient healing practice. One costs thousands. The other is free. One is prescription only. The other, you can start today. The big promises of fat loss drugs. GLP-1 agonists like Ozempic promise dramatic fat loss. The lesson it's teaching you about weight loss is that it's not about controlling the calories because the Ozempic doesn't burn any calories. It's about controlling your hunger. It's about that one level deeper. Why are you taking so many calories? So if you simply reduce the hunger, you're going to naturally eat fewer calories, which is going to cause weight loss. And that's what this Ozempic does. It, it really reduces your appetite to very low levels. Users report less hunger, smaller portions, and massive sudden weight drops. Even Elon Musk credits them. But is appetite suppression enough for real, lasting change? The old but gold power of fasting, fasting isn't a fad. It's hardwired into our biology. Fasting actually activates the body, for example, is, is very interesting because I think it's like if you're a caveman, for example, or a cave woman, and it's winter and there's nothing to eat. If your body starts to shut down, then evolutionarily you're going to die, right? Because you have less energy, you can't go out and hunt. So our body's just not that stupid. So what it does is says, okay, well, I'm going to give you more energy. So I'm going to activate the body, but then I'm going to change where you're getting your energy from. You're not going to get the energy from the food. You're going to get it from your body fat stores, which is your stored food. Dr. Jason Fung brought it back into the spotlight, not just as a tradition, but as a metabolic weapon. Fasting doesn't suppress appetite. It resets it. How they actually work. Fat loss drugs send signals to your brain to eat less. That's what this Ozempic does. It, it really reduces your appetite to very low levels. How? It's this, this hormone called GLP-1, uh, which is a natural sort of hormone. It's, it's released mostly in the intestines, in the distal intestine and the small intestine. And in response to certain foods, it, it goes up, right? So when you eat, the body has a homeostatic mechanism. So again, remember, you know, people think that we're just eating machines. We eat until, you know, we explode sort of thing, but that's not true. When you eat, you actually activate the GLP-1 along with other hormones. There's multiple hormonal systems. The GLP-1 is the one we're interested in. You activate GLP-1, which then sets into motion the, the, the instructions for you to stop eating, right? So the act of eating sort of sets in motion that whole uh, feedback loop to stop, right? So this is homeostasis, which is trying to keep things at a proper level. They mimic a hormone, GLP-1, that tells your body, I'm full. Fasting? It triggers your natural fat-burning mode. Insulin drops. Growth hormone rises. Bonus. Insight. Why the calories model fails. For decades, we've been told to eat less, move more. But what if that advice is outdated or even harmful? So we see this in almost every single study. We've known about it for like 80 years at least. You eat fewer calories, your body burns fewer calories. Well, that's going to limit how much weight you're gonna lose, right? So this idea that just eat fewer calories will automatically lead to weight loss is completely false because we know that eating fewer calories leads also to burning fewer calories. 
So you eat 500 less, your body burns 500 less, and you're not losing any body weight. Dr. Fung calls out the calorie model as fundamentally broken and introduces the real culprit, your hormones. Well, why can't you burn the fat that's on your body? Because there's 200, 300,000 calories of body fat. Why can't you access it? It's because you haven't activated the right hormones so that you can access it. If you eat the wrong foods and you're eating all the time, so you're eating 10 times a day, eight times a day, like people say you should, you're eating low fats, or you're eating tons of carbs, you're spiking your insulin. Insulin prevents you from burning body fat. Okay, so we've, again, we've known about this for 80 years. So now you eat 1500 calories, but you're keeping your insulin levels really high. So fewer calories, but lots mm. of high carb foods, eating all the time, insulin stays high. You're, you're taking in 1500, your body is now burning 2000, but you can't burn any body fat. So the calories that are stored in your body fat cannot be, cannot be sort of taken out. It's like it's in the bank and the bank is closed. It's, it, you can't take it out. The side effects they don't talk about. Fasting builds resilience, but drugs may build dependency. The GLP-1s then go to the brain. So they do certain things. They help with digestion. So they increase insulin response. And then they go to the brain. It crosses um, the, 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 the blood-brain barrier. So the GLP-1s gets released by the act of eating goes into the brain, crosses and is active um, in the sort of midbrain area that tells your body to stop eating. What these GLP-1s do, of course, is that it gives you the hormone that tells you to stop eating, even though you haven't eaten. It's sort of, that's, that's the way the drug works. So then what people tell you is that, you know, they're just not hungry. And if they're not hungry, then they don't eat. And when they don't eat, of course, insulin falls and you start to burn calories and lose weight. Ozempic users often regain weight when they stop. Why? Because they haven't fixed the root problem, hormone imbalance. But it wasn't about controlling the calories. It was about controlling the hunger. That was the important part of it. It's the hormones, right? Every successful drug to gain or lose weight, right, is a hormone. It's a hormone base because that's instructions to the body. Metabolism boosted or broken. Think fasting slows your metabolism? Think again. One of the things people talked about was, you know, it's gonna make you eat more later. It's gonna make you more hungry. Your basal metabolic rate's gonna go down. This was one of the big myths of intermittent fasting. That's gonna cause the so-called starvation mode, right? And this is the idea that your basal metabolic rate will fall so low that when you do start to eat, you're gonna gain weight again. So. I said, well, let's think about this. You can do a study where you take somebody, say you, for example, and you could fast them for four days and measure how much, how many calories they're burning, their basal metabolic rate on day zero before the fast and measure them four days into the fast and see how many calories you're burning. So on day zero, they say you're, you're burning, say 2000 calories a day. On day four of zero food, you don't eat any food for four days. They measure how much calories you're burning. Your body is burning 2200 calories. Your basal metabolic rate didn't go down. It went up. Studies show it actually boosts metabolic rate short term. Meanwhile, long term reliance on drugs may downregulate your natural hunger signals. Who loses more fat? Ozempic curbs hunger but fasting flips a metabolic switch. So you can go to 16 hours, for example, and you shrink that by either eating breakfast a little later or eating dinner a little earlier. But you can do more than that. You can do, say, a 24-hour fast. You could eat two meals a day, say, eat between 12 and 6. That's a six-hour eating window. Or you could eat once a day, which is like a 24-hour fast. Or you could even go multiple days uh, without eating. Because again, your body is smart. Like, our, your body knows what to do. If you have all those calories sitting on your body, right, 100,000 calories sitting in body fat, and you don't eat for three days, well, you need 6,000 calories. Well, you have 100,000, 200,000. So what's the problem? Take it out of your body fat. Let your body eat your body fat. That's what fasting is doing for you. After 16 hours, your body taps into stored fat. With no insulin in the way, fat loss becomes the default, not the struggle. What you do is you do some intermittent fasting. When you fast, insulin is going to fall. That's the whole point. Insulin is a hormone that goes up when you eat. It goes down when you don't eat. Right? So when you eat, insulin goes up, your body wants to store energy. When you don't eat, insulin goes down. Your body says, 
I have no energy, I have no food coming in, please take it out of storage. So now you take 1500 calories, but you do intermittent fasting. So you're allowing your insulin levels to fall. Now, 1500 calories are coming in, insulin levels are low, your body wants to burn 2000 calories. It says, well, insulin levels are low, let me take 500 calories from my body fat. Real results in the real world. Thousands of patients have reversed diabetes, dropped 50 plus pounds, and normalized blood sugar without pills, just fasting. So his weight starting just above 250 has been steadily coming down. And it's down to 210. His waist size has continued to come down. And his hemoglobin A1C, which is the measure of his sugars, has, has stayed relatively stable. So he started off with 55 units of insulin. And within, you know, six weeks, he was off of all his insulin. These aren't hacks. They're long-term transformations. Well, she very quickly lost about 20 pounds. And at her three-month checkup, her hemoglobin A1C was 5.5%, well within the normal range, and clearly not diabetic. Better, she had taken herself off of all her medications as soon as she started. The cost factor fa after fasting is free. Fat loss drugs can cost over $1,000 a month. So why is one pushed harder than the other? Follow the money. I looked through all the literature and I said, well, why is it bad for you? And they had all these reasons. There's all these myths about intermittent fasting and how it's going to cause you to gain weight and be tired and hungry and all these sorts of things. I said, well, no, there's actually a lot of data here over the last, you know, 2000 years that we've used intermittent fasting and they're simply not true. And I can go over a few of those. But that's why there was nobody talking about it at the time. And that's where I started to sort of bring it into the uh, sort of public consciousness that this is a tool. That's you, all it is. You were you attacked for that at the time? Oh, absolutely. Like I got, I got attacked from all sides. I got, you know, doctors were coming after me. Dietitians were coming after me. Everybody thought I was going to do so much harm. And the funny part was that, you know, as I think back, as I spoke to a lot of colleagues, a lot of colleagues would say to me, you know what, I used to do that when I was in training. We did that all the time. We'd go 24 hours without eating because we we're in the OR or we we're in the ER or we were busy. So we did that constantly and nothing bad happened. You can't sell a fast, but you can sell a shot. The biological reset versus the medical hack. Then there's this whole process called autophagy, which is just fascinating. And autophagy is this, um, so it's been very topical because in 2016, one of the key researchers was given the Nobel Prize in Medicine. So it's, it's a very important process that's been relatively recently discovered. And what they discovered is that when you don't eat protein particularly, but when you fast, your body activates this thing called autophagy and it breaks down some of the subcellular organs, which sounds really bad subcellular organs yeah so uh you know these are sort of like the organs within the cell so it's not like the liver but uh, there's something called organelles within a cell and some of that is broken down so basically these proteins and so on within the cell your body gets rid of that and you think oh well that sounds really bad but it's not it turns out that it's very very good for you fasting doesn't just burn fat it rejuvenates your cells through autophagy your body clears out old junk and rebuilds stronger. It's an opportunity for your body to get rid of all this old protein, old junky protein. And at the same time, remember that you're fasting, your growth hormone levels are shooting up through the roof. So like a you know two, three day fast, your growth hormone levels might have go up five times. So you're getting rid of all the old stuff. Then when you eat again, you're actually got growth hormone to produce new proteins. So in essence, you're getting rid of the old, you're bringing in the new, it's basically the process of rejuvenation. That's not a diet, that's evolution at work. So which works better? If you want a quick fix, drugs deliver. But if you want root cause healing that's free and powerful, fasting wins every time. Let's think about all getting together and helping each other to become so much healthier not through drugs and not through more surgery and not with, you know, weird and new things that you've never heard of, but with the tried and the true sort of oldest thinking that has been there, right? Fasting versus fat loss drugs. One rewires your hormones. The other just rewires your habits. 
temporarily. Learn which five special foods Dr. Fung recommends to eat with intermittent fasting to further cement your successful weight loss.